We were talking about Lindsey Graham's, I guess, uh, great adventure, uh, which ended with him. And, and who knows? Maybe he's going to continue it, but maybe maybe he's learned a lesson. It's going to be interesting to watch where Lindsey Graham goes uh, going forward, particularly if any immigration stuff is in any way resolved. But uh, Lindsey Graham uh, started investing in this uh, program to convince Donald Trump that uh, he was his buddy and that Donald Trump was the best and the greatest, uh, the greatest golfer, the greatest everything. And uh, it left Lindsey Graham holding the bag when it came to attempting to drive some type of immigration compromise with the Democrats. Of course, um, we mentioned, uh, and uh, you made this point in your piece in Salon, uh, John Kelly uh, has not only the president's ear, but he has an agenda of his own, and it's a virulently anti-immigrant agenda. And I know you also wrote about... um, the uh, our values as a country going down the s hole, as it were, uh, and the sort of the assault that we're watching, not just on so-called illegal immigration uh, about undocumented uh, immigration to this country, but also legal uh, immigration. But before we get there, let's talk about this. We 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 don't know how this shutdown is going to resolve. We don't know if we're going to get a continuing resolution, whether that's going to involve. A, an extension or a permanent uh, extension or authorization of, of CHIP, which is Child Health Insurance Program, uh, whether it's going to involve DACA. But from your perspective, like, what do you think, how, because in the House, all right, we still don't know if the Republicans in the House are going to be able to pass anything. They could, theoretically, with the numbers, but we don't know. If the uh, Republic, the conservatives, the arch conservatives are going to try and stop the Republicans from uh, from passing a continued resolution, we don't know if they're going to need Democratic votes in the House. Certainly in the Senate, Democrats would have to be proactive in stopping um, a continuing resolution. So they would be technically, I guess you could argue they're responsible for the shutdown. What should Democrats do? Uh, Put aside for a moment tactics. What should their strategy be here? Should they leverage a government shutdown to get something like DACA or and or um, permanent extension of 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 chip? Uh, Or should they basically just accept the fact that they don't want the government to shut down and that puts them at a distinct disadvantage? Well, I, th- I, you know, my personal feeling is is that this has been kicked down the road as far as it can, a- and the Democrats do have limited leverage. Uh, this is really it, and I, my personal feeling is is that now's the time to have the fight. You know, I think it it makes, per- you know, and I'm saying that on a tactical level, but also just on a sort of, you know, uh, on a moral level. At some point, they have to stand up and say this, you know, DACA or nothing. Um, it's, it's, this is not something that you can really play games with. And I understand that there's some balking going on among some of the red state Democrats in the Senate. And, you know, we, we, I guess it remains to be seen whether or not they, at this, at this moment that you and I are talking, whether or not they will actually filibuster a a continuing resolution. Um, but the, the fact is, is that this has to be dealt with, and the, and there's not that much time left. I mean, this thing, uh, what is it, expires March 5th, right? You're talking um, about DACA. You're talking about, about DACA. DACA, right? Yeah. So, I mean, they have to they have to deal with this, and there's administrative stuff that has to happen in advance of that date in order to deal with whatever solution, if there is a solution that's going to come up. They they need a little lead time on it. Um, so, uh, you know, I am I don't know how many Republicans really care about those 800,000 kids. There was a time when I would have thought that most of them actually had some conscience and would have cared what happened to them. I, I no longer have that, that faith that there are very many. Um, but there may be enough, and they are facing an election coming up next fall, and it looks like it may be a bloodbath. Um, if, and I think that many of them at least have that much uh, you know, of a concept of self-preservation right. that doing this as their swan song, even if that's all it is, uh, may not be the best thing to do. So, 
you know, I don't know. I think they should. I think they should do it. I, I don't think most people in the country are going to look at this and go, "Oh, those horrible Democrats! Look what they're doing." You know, trying to save those eight hundred. I mean, if the, if not for this, then what? Right? I mean, if not for this, then what? Now the Republicans are going to scream and yell about you're not funding the military, our troops, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I don't know. There's just a certain staleness to that that I just don't think is going to be bought, and I think that the Democrats need to have the courage of their convictions. This is the moment. I, I sort of understood why they let it go after, you know, it, it just before Christmas, and you know, I, I would have understood if they didn't. But I got, you know, I thought, okay, well, I, I can sort of see why they need a little bit of a breather here. Now's the time. You know, stand up, do the right thing. And and I mean, and we should say, I mean, there's there's a couple of things that, you know, there's the what are the political consequences? There's also I mean, and and, and I, I I'm with you on this. And, and, and but I will say that it is with a great amount of trepidation. Right. I mean, there are are millions of government workers who yep. will be furloughed. Uh, it is not inconceivable that this won't go on for months. Certainly, Republicans will have no interest in making these people whole after the fact. There, uh, there is it. I, it would be surprising. It, well, let's put it this way: if it goes on for months, you're talking about people losing their houses. Maybe you're talking about people suffering a um, serious uh, economic deprivation uh, because you know you can't go to your landlord and say the government's not paying me. Um, can you give me, you know, a, a permanent, uh, punt essentially on my, uh, on my, uh, rent until, until it comes in. So this is a, you know, we shouldn't take this, uh, likely, uh, lightly. And I, and I don't think, uh, the Democrats will. And that is, you know, that is one consideration. How, how long will they stay in there? Because, you know, Republicans, they don't mind shutting down government. They don't mind people getting bad service from their government because, that is, of course, their agenda. They want government to be shut down. And uh, if they can make some type of argument like, oh, you know, look, uh, it wasn't serving that much of a function anyways. We don't need it. Um, so th there's a there's a lot. Of, there should be people should have a lot of trepidation about this. But I think broadly speaking, um, you are right. The Democrats have to plant their flag into the sand. And then the question becomes, Will they pay a political price? And I want to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk more about that because uh, some people say, you know, look, there's a lot of examples of the opposition party paying a big price for being involved in a government shutdown. Uh, but we've never seen a scenario quite like this for a number of reasons. And again, you know, technically speaking, if, if they're if they're able to uh, stop it in the House, then they, then then Democrats uh, won't technically be responsible for the government shutdown. 